Now let's illustrate our resulting paradigm for the corporation. The primary goal of the corporation is to maximize shareholders' wealth. And that's the same as maximizing common stock prices. Within the corporation, the financial management function deals with two basic financial decisions, the investment decision and the financing decision. And the outcome of these decisions impact stock price. So that stock price is a reflection of the corporation's investment and financing decisions. And this is the key to the paradigm of the corporation. This is what makes the paradigm work. Well, let's question that and let's ask, are stock prices really a reflection of investment and financing decisions? It's often said that managers shouldn't focus on current stock value because doing so will lead to an overemphasis on short-term earnings at the expense of long-term investments. Some managers complain that the market is myopic, the market is nearsighted, that investors are fixated on current earnings. In support of this view, they point out that if quarterly earnings miss analyst forecasts, the firm's stock price takes an immediate hit in the market. But if quarterly earnings exceed analyst expectations, the stock price immediately increases. They claim that the market's fixation on the near term forces them to concentrate on near term earnings at the expense of long term investments. So, is the market myopic and only sees the near term, or is this just an excuse for poor management? Let me make two points. First, the market's reaction to earnings announcements demonstrates the information efficiency of the financial market. In an information efficient market, investors trade on all new information arriving in the market that is relevant to the valuation of the corporation. In competition among investors to capture the benefit of trading on new information results in the rapid incorporation of new information into stock prices such that stock prices reflect all relevant information that has been released into the financial market. That reported earnings are different from what was expected for earnings is obviously new information, and investors trade on new information. Hence the reaction in stock price to announcements of current earnings. Moreover, Information from these reported earnings is extrapolated by investors into future periods, revising their expectations for the firm's future equity cash flows. So by reacting to announcements of current earnings, the market isn't being nearsighted. It's looking into the future. My second point is that just because the market is information efficient with respect to current earnings, doesn't necessarily mean that the market is not information efficient with respect to long-term investments. There's a large body of financial research that examines information efficiency and how stock prices react to announcements of the firm's investment decisions and its financing decisions. And let's look at an example of this research. This particular study examines the stock price reaction to increases in capital expenditures announced by firms and industries with good growth opportunities. Intuitively, when a firm having good growth opportunities increases its long-term investments to undertake those opportunities, we should expect stock prices to react positively to such announcements in an information efficient market. Well, let's look at the empirical evidence. The researchers collect a sample of firms with good growth opportunities that announce increases in their capital expenditures. The focus is on the stock price reactions to the announcements on the announcement day, which is designated day zero. An average excess return on that day is calculated for the sample firms. We calculate the excess returns by adjusting the firm's own stock return for the return on the overall market. This is the stock's return that's in excess to the overall market return and it captures the stock price reaction to an event 
that is specific only to the firm. On day zero, that firm specific event is the announcement of an increase in capital expenditures. In addition to the announcement day zero, we also examine excess returns over the five previous days. In the graphic on the left, we look at average excess returns earned on each individual day. If there are no significant events, the change in stock price should be random, and the average not statistically different from zero. In the graphic on the right, we accumulate the average excess returns by sequentially summing them over time. If stock prices are changing randomly, their cumulative effect over time should be essentially zero. Now let's look at the results. Let's start with the pre-announcement days. On the left, stock prices are changing randomly, positive and negative. The average excess returns on each day are not statistically different from zero. On the right, the cumulative excess returns are oscillating around zero, indicating no net change in stock value over that time period. Now let's go to day zero. And on day zero, the firm announces an increase in capital expenditures. And boom, the stock price reacts significantly and positively to the announcement. So what this indicates is that investors are keenly interested in the corporation's long-term investments and that new information about these investments is quickly reflected in stock prices, a demonstration of the information efficiency of the financial markets. Numerous studies have examined stock price reaction to a wide range of investment and financing decisions. The evidence overwhelmingly supports information efficiency in the financial markets with respect to the corporation's long-term investment decisions and financing decisions. So our paradigm of the corporation holds because stock prices are a reflection of the corporation's investment decisions and its financing decisions. Shareholders' interests versus stakeholders' interests and the goal of the firm. We recognize that shareholders are but one of a number of stakeholders in the corporation. These other stakeholders have interests that they want the corporation to promote and so the corporation has explicit and implicit contracts with these stakeholders. The corporation can be viewed as a nexus of contracts with its various stakeholders. Given these other stakeholders and their interests, can the firm's primary goal be directed at promoting the interests of shareholders? Will the other stakeholders be comfortable with that primary goal? I'll argue that in general, all stakeholders in the corporation will agree that the primary goal of the corporation should be maximizing shareholders' wealth. Because by meeting the interests of shareholders, their interests will be met as well. And I'll present this argument in the next topic.